hi spooky girls and spooky guys today oh i got itchy nose today we're doing just a quick little uh chit chat get ready with me kind of thing nothing precise i'm not going to explain any of the products i'm using hardly or what i'm doing i'm just going to put on some makeup and talk to you guys i have to meet with a client today and do some makeup for homecoming and then later this evening we're going to be getting, probably grabbing some dinner and then going to a rock show so i wanted to do something that could transition into night and do some nice looking makeup because I feel like if you're working on a client, you need to kind of look the part a little bit, right? <laughs> so this is the look I did today. I decided to go with a bold lip because it's fall and I, it doesn't matter to me if it's fall or not. I'm wearing a bold lip and uh, a nice soft eyes with kind of some cool tones in there because I'm really feeling some cool tone looks lately. But yeah, this is what I came up with. But if you want to see kind of how I got this look a little bit. We just chit chat. We're going to talk about frustrating clients, weight loss struggles a little bit here and there, and fun night out last night, stuff like that. And just kind of generally catch up and chit chat. But before all that, go ahead and give me a subscribe and maybe a like. And uh, after you watch this video, give a comment. We'll talk about some job frustrations or whatever you got going on. Let's let's just have it out in the comments and talk. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Get ready with me. Rambly mess that it is. Good morning. I have to do a really quick get ready with me action. Well, I just need to get ready because I'm working today and we're also going to a rock show later this evening. So, okay, so I need to get makeup on that I can work in and then transition into evening. So today I think I'm going to use the uh, Huda Beauty Smoky Palette because it's such a good palette for transitioning from night to day. And I've just been in the mood for cool tone looks. I actually just this morning ordered the Lime Crime Immortalis Palette because ooh, it's so pretty. It's the first time I've actually purchased anything from Lime Crime, but that palette really just sucked me in. I was like, I need it. I need it. It's so beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this eyeshadow. We have a, it's homecoming here in uh, Louisiana, so I have a client to do makeup on today for the homecoming dance. But this is just for a, a friend's daughter. It's nothing professional or super elaborate or crazy. They're just coming over here. We're just gonna chill out and I'm gonna do her makeup. Freelance as much as I used to. I used to like it, but it's just, uh, it's a lot of work <laughs> for not, to me, not enough payoff. Like, you usually have to travel somewhere. There's gas, there's, they, uh, you're there for quite a few hours usually because it's like a lot of waiting around until it's time for makeup time or whatever and I think so I still do them for friends and stuff you know but like for strangers I'm kind of over kills my back toting my kid around and you have to buy so much supplies for your kit and stuff that by the time you get paid you're making enough to justify doing it it's not that I don't enjoy the makeup artistry side of it that part I do like it's not really for me like, I'm good at it and everything, it's just <sighs> frustrates me. Especially when it's like a big wedding. Oh my god, because I've done some pretty decent ones and they're fun. But when I think about doing it, I just get really stressed out. <laughs> There's a lot of shitty clients sometimes you have to deal with. And that's pretty annoying. You get shorted. Sometimes they don't want to pay you. Or they'll ask your price and they get mad and then ghost you. It's shit like that. That's what, like... The business side of it's me. I hate. I just take a darker brown. It's really frustrating to work so hard and you know do all this stuff and then oh no you charge too much. Like sit there and talk to them do a consultation. If they don't ask your price right away then they'll ask your price right off the bat and then you never hear from them again. That's happened to people like I know like friends. <laughs> I'm like well I'm sorry. I'll just get Sephora. Well you fine you just go on the Sephora then. Pay you $50 and hope that they do a decent job on you. So I've really discovered that I just really, I like blogging. Like I like to just talk about makeup and share looks and do tutorials. And it's fun to do stuff on other people here and there, of course. But I just, when it's for fun, it's fun. But when it's like the pressure of working, that's when it's not as fun anymore. Today's not a big deal because I know... The young lady, I've done her makeup, I think it's the third year in a row. I've done her uh, homecoming and or prom makeup. So it's low pressure. But to me, when it's, you know, strangers, especially meeting them the day of, 
I hate that. I hate when they book me and they're like, my wedding's this weekend. Can you come do it? And I'm like, don't you want to like sit down and talk and like figure out your makeup and what you want? And then you get there and they're like, just make me pretty. They have no, no direction. I'm like, well, what are your colors? Like, what do you like? <laughs> we don't have time for all this. You're about to get married. Like plan ahead. It's, see, it's more frustration with people's shitty planning than it is anything else. And they, that's part of those things was like as a Capricorn, that's like a pet peeve. It's like, oh my God, why can you not plan this out and at least book me a month in advance so we could sit down and have a five minute, just get some coffee and talk about what you like at least. Ideally, I like to do a consultation. I like to sit down with them beforehand. This is for weddings mostly. Do a trial run, play with some looks. The same client that shorted me, she was also one that had no no idea really what she wanted. Beyond, she's like, I want wing liner, a cut crease. And she's like, kind of want like Instagram makeup. No consultation though. No trial run for any of this elaborate stuff. And so it's like, okay, so your colors are kind of fall colors. You want burgundies and stuff. So, okay. So I do a softer cut crease on her. I do a wing, but it's a very, I think, a classy wing. I tried to take that Instagram look and make it a little more classic and very what you would want for a wedding. Because for a wedding, you don't want trendy makeup. You want to wear something that looks like you, but just a better version of yourself. And if you're someone who wears a lot of makeup, you can do that quick cut crease on your wedding day. If, you know, if you do that often. But... This girl, I don't think, she didn't do makeup very much. She just went and found some pictures on Pinterest. And she didn't really know what she was talking about kind of thing. Like, she didn't even know what a cut crease was. Like, she was just describing one to me. And all her bridesmaids are sitting there doing their own makeup. Because initially they had booked me to do all their makeup. And I was like, oh, cool, you know, good payday, right? Allotted five hours, all this stuff. Drove to the location with this whole thing. And then get there, oh, well, we're doing our own makeup. And oh, well, okay, you go ahead and do your own makeup. It wasn't, like, just so unorganized, it felt like, such a mess. It's like, why did you guys even bother booking a makeup artist? You're kind of shitty, but you have shitty clients. That's part of it. And I don't, I don't need that kind of stress in my life. Negativity. Honestly, I'm like, and I don't have to do it. You know, it was just something I was doing because I enjoyed it. Anyway, we went out to dinner last night with my friend Lila we, and actually my high school art teacher. Well, he was like a sub teacher all throughout my elementary, junior high years. And then he filled in for my art teacher for like almost a full year when my, art, my actual art teacher went on sabbatical. Anyway, we I reconnected with him at a local bar. <laughs> And him and my husband really hit it off. He's an artist. He's just a cool dude, right? Like, he's somebody that is so fun to hang out with. He just started doing stand-up comedy. So that was really cool. He did a local show. And he's just one of the sweetest, best per people in the absolute world. Like, you couldn't name a better person. He's great with children. He's one of those teachers that, like, when he, he teaches you, he kind of... He'll say something and it's going to stick with you the rest of your life kind of thing. And he really appreciates the things kids say to him and remembers it. And he's got all these wonderful, wonderful stories from teaching. And he also lived in L.A. and worked in L.A. as a, um, like, not architect, but as a contractor. And he did construction out there. So he worked with some celebrities and stuff. And he's got lots of really cool, like, celebrity stories <laughs> of people he's met just... Like where he would end up getting invited to a party and stuff and they would be there. Lots of cool stories. And he's an artist, like an engineer, a teacher. He's kind of done everything and now he's, he's you know, a writer. And so now he's getting into stand-up, so that's pretty cool. Like, man, he's so, he's so good at it because he's so good at speaking and he's so funny. He's somebody that you just, you can't help but crack up at and sit there and just... And it's all pretty like innocent humor. It's a lot of it's about like stuff the kids say and you know, it's not dirty or anything. Like it's just I think he could appeal to a broad audience. But we always loved when he was our sub, was like, Yes, it's Mr. Rex. This is his name Mr. Rex. And I still call him Mr. Rex. I cannot make myself call him by his first name. And then he's like, you know you can call me by my first name. I'm like, no, I can't. 
I cannot call you by your first name. <laughs> you are Mr. Rex. <laughs> so yeah, this is pretty much where I'm gonna stop on the eyes for today. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of liner on. Yeah, we all went to dinner last night at a Mexican restaurant we always go to, El Paso. The one that's got the flautas that I'm really obsessed with right now and taco salads and basically everything and like the sweetest staff ever. Like there's one young lady that works there that I just adore. She's cute as hell and like I want to do her makeup. She's so cute. See that's, that's where the artistry comes in with me. I'm like there's people that I just want to do their makeup because I like their face. <laughs> I've always been kind of like I like faces. I remember somebody telling me that like in high school or something. I was like you really like faces don't you? And I was like yes I do. I do like faces because I used to draw portraits all the time. That that's actually kind of part of how I got into makeup artistry is was I was doing portraits and I loved when it got to doing like the finishing touches and like the makeup because actually my back original background is like in fine arts anyway and actually taught a little bit of fine arts I've always had a bit of a thing for teaching so that's I think my Mr. Rex like we were bonded so much I went to high school and I bonded with my other art teacher so well that he would let me take over and teach the fine art survey class. Cause he's like, you know it better than anybody else here. Go around, help them, teach them to draw a circle. Like that kind of stuff. It was, you know, the basics, but I was really good at it. And like, I found this one of those moments where you feel like this warm fuzziness inside where you found something that you're good at and this is for you. And so I found teaching and art and some kind of creative skill. These were, where I felt at home, I felt warm and happy inside. And I think that's why I enjoy doing tutorials so much because it's really mixing the two things I truly love, which is talking, teaching, and makeup. <laughs> and it's the best. Like I actually enjoy doing one-on-one -on -one tutorials with people in person. That's a thing I've done. I've thought about offering, doing like that over Skype or something. I, I like helping people more than just sitting out doing their makeup. I like to explain it while I'm doing it. Like I love when they have questions. I was doing a client a few months ago and her mom was watching and her mom would ask questions all the time and I explained to her what I was doing. That was fun. I love when they're engaged in what I'm doing and like, hey, show me how to do this real quick or something. That is so much fun. We have some time to kill. We could just play. I love doing that. So I think I'd, I'm more of a teacher type because when I'm confident, I know my subject, I can talk for hours. There's no nervousness, no fear, no anything. I don't blank. I can just, I still struggle with intro and outros with my videos because it's not explaining or whatever is kind of a forced aspect of your video. I mean, that's still the hardest part. I'm like, crap, I have to like summarize what I did in the video or something. And it's just, to me, that part's still awkward. But it's the middle part, the review segment or the tutorial segment, especially the tutorial, tutorials. I find it incredibly easy to do and I can just keep going da, 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 da. no problems no blanks but when it comes to like the intros in particular those are a little bit of a struggle for me still but I mean I haven't been doing this that long so I think that's normal eventually I think this stuff does become second nature this part of it the talking definitely has and you think you would feel like an idiot sitting here talking to well, essentially myself, because I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder a little bit and I'm looking at myself in a mirror, you think it would be kind of, you'd feel like a doofus. And you do at first. It also gets pretty easy and enjoyable and relaxing almost. And it becomes something wonderful, I think, and therapeutic, very therapeutic, surprisingly. Like um, yesterday when I was kind of the failed filming video that I didn't post, or not gonna post. I was talking about, it's not weight gain, and I've gained a about, I'm just priming some poor putty from e.l.f. I've gained about uh, 15 pounds, 20 pounds really, and I think I've lost about five, so I'm back at like 15. And um, I was telling you yesterday, because I was feeling so bad about myself, like feeling so crappy because I went to go put my pants on. They were slight, they were a little tight and I was like, no, because they're giving me a muffin top and it was pissing me off because they were, it's not like they're even new pants. It wasn't even that big a deal. 
I can lose five pounds, I'll fit again. I just need to, you know, crack down and take care of myself and eat healthy and quit eating junk. It's not the end of the world, right? And I think, you know, a few months ago, that would have been the end of the world to me. I would have probably been crying mess and not wanting to go to dinner. I'd be like, nope, I'm not leaving the house. But I just, it just kind of rolled off yesterday. You know, or like I rolled with the punches with yesterday. I was like, okay, well, I'll just put on these jeans that do fit me. It's not a big deal. We know what we need to do to lose the weight. It's okay. And think about why you gained the weight. You gained the weight because you got your teeth fixed and you couldn't eat solid food for nine weeks. So you're eating nothing but mashed potatoes and ice cream. And you know, your body doesn't tolerate carbs and sugar you just pack it on like that's just the way my body is like I can't eat carbs and sugar without just ballooning so that's the kind of lifestyle I have to have is very strict and I also I think gain weight because I quit drinking and quit smoking and that's very normal to gain at least 15 pounds when you do that because you know it's you're uh replacing it with food a lot of times and that's normal it's part of the process part of the journey when you change something like that in your lifestyle is you're gonna gonna maybe eat those emotions a little bit because it's it does get a little emotional in there and stuff like i was eating a lot of my feelings because i was having a really hard time mentally dealing with a lot of stuff and then things have been really kind of stressful a little bit but last i say last three this last month i've been eating pretty clean pretty healthy i kind of messed up this week though but it's okay it's okay you can mess up it's all right you don't have to beat yourself up about it. And that's another thing that I am teaching myself and learning and just learning to go easy on myself and not get mad just and hate myself over eating a donut. Like, big deal. You had a donut and it was fucking good and it was worth it. Now just go back, eat healthy the rest of the day, you'll be okay. I just, I'm trying to relax, I guess is what I'm saying, and just go easier on myself. But I was really kind of proud of myself for not losing my damn mind over my pants not fitting properly yesterday because... I could see myself a couple months ago just crumbling and punching a wall or something, just being really upset. And it wasn't like they didn't fit, they were just a little snug and uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's just like half a size too tight. Big deal. Big deal. It's not the end of the world. Initially made me feel sick to my stomach because I had lost 50 pounds and like if I see it creep back up, I panic. Look at me use my tartist. Pro Glow because I freaking love the cream contour and the contour shade in this. I wish they sold those individually because oh my god, they're so good. They're so perfect for pale skin. And go in a little heavy because I'm doing this before foundation. I do want to do a really in depth video on cream contouring because I love doing it. I, I love the process of doing this. It's fun to me. Yeah, I'm getting back into vlogging Monday as well. I kind of did a little bit this week, just kind of on and off. So I have like kind of some jumbled footage that I'm gonna put into a little vlog to go up Monday. So I've been kind of half editing it yesterday and I'll probably do a little bit this afternoon when I got some free time. Monday we're going to Natchitoches. I think I've vlogged there before. It's, it's kind of a historical town that's got some shopping but my friend's got a she's got a doctor's appointment there so we're gonna make a little day of it. We're gonna use fresh wear or rather fresh wear because it's just kind of the best. I really want to get the uh, uh, Maybelline Urban Dream or whatever. Urban cover. Urban something. <laughs> but it's got a lot of SPF in it and I'm allergic to SPF. Like a lot of it. So I don't know if it will break me out or not. Or give me hives. I get hives when I use something with too much SPF in it. I have a full on SPF allergy. So when it's summer and we're like going out to like the lake or to swimming somewhere I have to put on SPF because a you just have to B, I'm a freaking vampire I, I will burn in the Sun like it's bad I burn terrible terribly easily so I usually wear SPF every day anyway but a very a lower if it's below 30 I'm okay on my face For some reason on my face I'm fine it's on my body that it tends to be the worst. If we're going to like, you know, a pool party or something, I have to, you know, coat myself in SPF because I will be bright red in no time. But I have to take um, antihistamine to balance it out and not be covered in hives the next day. And oh my gosh, it, it can be so bad, especially like the spray on SPFs. 
everywhere it gets on my body, I'm gonna have a rashy hive, hivey mess. <laughs> yeah, it does not feel good either. It itches and kind of burns and gets really inflamed and hot feeling. Like this has what? An SPF 25 in it. So that's fine to me. I didn't, my moisturizer doesn't have SPF in it today, but I'm not really going outside today until nighttime, so it's okay. We're gonna use the e.l.f. because I know it lasts me all day. How many of y'all watched a review of this? <laughs> this concealer is amazing. I'll link it somewhere because, oh, me and this concealer, we are best friends now. Do you ever get somebody's music from their videos stuck in your head? I get this one annoying, or like two annoying songs that some, a couple of people I watch, they always use the same music in their videos. It's like, oh my God, I haven't heard it in like days. Why? It's not that filming, like sitting on my camera or anything, takes a whole lot of extra time. I just get distracted while I'm doing this talking and it ends up making where my makeup takes me a little bit longer than it should. But at the same time, I enjoy doing this. I like talking while I'm doing my makeup. This is fun. It's some, I don't know, makes me kind of happy. Okay. Here's something weird. Does anyone else's like makeup oxidize on their hand more than it does on their face, but it, on their body it will? That's another thing that happens to me. Like my foundation will oxidize on my neck and my chest way darker than it does on my face. So it looks like it doesn't match even worse. Like it's weird. And like on my hand, it turns straight orange. Go ahead and do some contour. I am really into using this guy for contouring lately. I used to do that and I got back into it. So like it just gets in them, gets in the nook cheekbone look really well. Like I've never been a fan of using these for highlighter though. Does anyone else like really love contouring? Like I just enjoy the art of the contour. <laughs> like I love everything about it. I love watching the transformation. I love doing it to other people. I just think it's fun. It's like painting to me because I always loved doing this part when I would draw portraits. I was adding the shadow. That's the one thing I'm still like trying to find that sweet spot with my camera. <laughs> like where I truly like my angle and all that. This one's Things you're probably always trying to improve. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice. There's a nice soft eye. I love this for like every, every day. Like the Smoky palette is one of the best palettes in the world anyway. <laughs> like it's just so good for day to day. And then to ramp it up for nighttime. Like it's my favorite one for travel. I think I put that in like a travel favorites multiple times probably on my blog and on here. Make it dewy, 16 hour setting spray because it's a great setting spray. God, I love the smell of it. And the sprayer is really nice. I love how this eye look came out. It's just so simple and pretty. I kind of feel like a dark lip would look great with this, right? I know a lot of people would probably rather a nude or something soft, which is totally fine. It would look beautiful with this as well. But I'm going to go in with the Club Popper from NYX, which is a super deep, deep dark lip. Yeah, that's what this look needed. Super bold lip. Oh, mascara. I need to do that. I'm going to use... Snapscara in burgundy. Okay, and here's the look all done. <laughs> yeah, the lips are a little bit locked for daytime for some people. Eh. I love a bold lip no matter when, no matter what time of year. Eyes are nice and soft and kind of cool toned and just neutral and kind of went through with the skin, the brows and everything else and the hair is a little crazy because it's my hair so it's crazy. If you enjoy just hanging out with me and chit chatting and listening to me ramble about annoying clients and frustrations with eating healthy and trying to be healthy and all that jazz. Just drop me a like and subscribe and leave me a comment below. Tell me what are some things you get frustrated with or aspects of your job that are annoying. Let me know. Let's chit chat about it in the comments section. And that's all for today and I will see y'all next time. Bye now.